Hi guys, welcome back to the Ardor server. So in today's video, I'm going to be repairing this 9305-16i. If you uh, take a close look here, you can see that, oh, it's on this side here, the uh, SAS port right there is damaged, and I think it got crushed in shipping, and this part just kind of collapsed right there. And so I'm going to be replacing this whole connector as it's just one piece. And you, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know I've uh, done this before uh, with other SAS controllers with a dual SFF8643 uh, ports. I've never done a quad port before, so I thought I'd make a recording of this while I do this. I don't think it's going to be uh, really that different other than the fact that this connector is going to be uh, wider and there's going to be more pins to have to make sure I line up with all the pin um, the, the holes here. Uh, for you know all the SAS lanes and stuff like that but otherwise I think it's going to be fairly straightforward so okay so let's get started so I've got my screwdriver first I got to remove these uh, five screws that hold the connector um, so let's go ahead and start getting that done okay that's one And I'll hold this up to the camera there so you guys can get a view of what's going on. All right, that's two. And three. Now these connectors don't come with replacement screws, so you want to make sure, if you're doing this kind of thing, you want to make sure you don't lose these screws. Okay, so there's the five screws. And so now I just have to pry this connector off because it basically has a bunch of these pins on the bottom that look like um, the eye of a needle and when you press them into the holes there they compress and make a con the electrical contact with these holes so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but here's here's my box of uh, connectors or the you know these uh, quad SFF 8643 uh, connectors and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but see all those little tiny pins there if you look from the side see is it possible for you guys to see this on camera I don't know if it's possible it looks a little blurry I don't think you'll be able to see it but basically they're like little uh, needle eyes so anyway, um, but I got to figure out how to pry this off first. And it looks like I'll probably start prying from this side. So I've got a little tiny little pry bar here. I'll probably start pulling it off this way. And usually I'd like to be able to do it from the side as well. But the heat sink's kind of in the way. Um, I might be able to do it from here. I can get... Okay, so there's a little bit of a groove right there. I can get the uh, pry tool in there and pull on that. But the other side has uh, these pins. So I'm not really going to be able to do that very well. Uh, maybe like right there. Well, I might be able to pry from there. But hopefully, uh, just prying from this side, I'll be able to get most of it off. So all right, let's get started on this. The thing is, um, I try to pry this off as evenly as possible because I don't want the pins to break off in the hole. That would be, yeah, that would be really bad. I'm not sure how I'd be able to get those little pins out of the holes if they broke off and were stuck in there. All right, so let's see, am I making it? You know, this PCB is uh, flexing too much. So let me try putting it down here against the table. It's not budging very much. All right, I'm gonna try it from the side a little bit. It's moving just a tiny bit. I don't know if you can 
see that you can see a little bit of those silver pins are exposed there but I've got a long way to go okay so it's moving along you can see all the pins are exposed a little bit right this is actually a little bit harder than the uh, dual port the dual port usually comes off fairly easily I guess this has double the number of pins kind of compression fit, fitted in those holes so um, trying to get the whole connector to to budge is a little bit harder than uh, the dual port version of this it's just held on uh, a little bit tighter than usual but yeah you can see the pins are starting to get exposed okay that one popped a little bit so that one I think came loose see if I can get maybe the next one now that that one's not really holding on anymore yeah definitely a lot more progress there All right, so the connector, this one right here, the very, uh, on the very edge here, all the pins look like they're out. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that all the pins are out. So that one's kind of loose. I just don't have a way to pry on the second one here uh, from the side. So what I'm going to do is, I see a little gap between the connectors, there's a, a gap here. I'm gonna try to get the pry bar in there. And so, so far I've been prying up on the connector like this. I'm gonna try to get it in there and pry um, more from the center like this area right here. So definitely making more progress. I'm gonna do the same thing on, um, on this side. So hopefully nothing broke um, as far as the pins are concerned. Uh, I think I see every pin there. Yeah, I think all the pins are there. Um, I guess I can also look through the uh, the holes to see if everything came out right. Uh, I'm going to shine it against the light here so I can see. Okay, yeah. I have the lights from coming from the side, so um, looking at it this way, I can see the lights coming through uh, all the holes, and yeah, nothing, nothing broke off in the holes. So all right, so uh, I guess we don't need this anymore. Or actually, these uh, okay. So the new connectors, they look a little bit different, but they're the same. Uh, this is made by, the original one here is made by Molex and uh, the one I bought is from Amphenol and so they're slightly different but they'll function exactly the same but I, I want to transfer these uh, little stickers that tell the port numbers uh, onto this one later on so I'll keep this around until I get those stickers off uh, later alright so we have to line up all the uh, all the pins to the holes usually you can kind of just do that by feel because once everything kind of lines up it just kind of you can kind of just feel that every all the pins are in okay yeah like that and uh, if you try to like shift to the side it won't because all the pins are in the holes and so now I just have to compress this, uh, the new connector, into the holes. And for that, 
I, I like to use this tool and so I can start probably like right here All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but just do compress it just a little bit. Okay, I can feel that go in. And I want to do the same to this side, but I've got little, um, these pins that are sticking out here so and this is, you know, kind of a straight surface, so I don't know if I can do that very well. Um, let me give it a try. Okay. So yeah, you can see it doesn't really sit flush. Let's see, can you see? Yeah, over there. But I'm gonna try to just compress it a little bit, at least. Okay, that looked like it compressed. Uh, let's do a little bit more on this side. Okay, that I think is now fully seated on this side. This side needs to go in just a little bit more. You know, to finish compressing this side, I'm going to, I think going to, I'm going to get a C-clamp. So, one second. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I think this one and this one need to be compressed a little bit more. I can see a gap there. I mean, I'm pretty sure the pins are probably in, but, alright, so, let's see here. I'll start with this. So I've got that. Making sure I'm not contacting any components on this side. And uh, all right, let's just uh, screw this in. Okay, so I think that's fully in. Just loosen a little bit. And then I'm gonna move it to this last one on the edge. This is the one that's kind of hard to get with that other, the pliers. Okay, so just gonna tighten that. Okay. Yep, that's fully seated. So there's no gap between the connector and uh, and the uh, the board, and so now I just have to put the screws back in. So compared to the other repairs I've done, similar to this, I th think the most notable difference is that because there are double number of pins. Uh, with this connector, it was a little bit harder to pry off. And then as far as compressing it, yeah, there's these pins here that kind of make uh, using the the pliers a little bit difficult. Alright, everything looks good so far. Um, I'm just checking to see if the gap has widened. Uh, because sometimes when you're pressing down on these screws, it could push the connector back out. But I don't think that happens, so that's good. Alright, so just two more screws. Alright, so there are the five screws secured in. And uh, hopefully everything is going to work. I'll have to test this out, of course, just to make sure all the, all the connections are working and stuff like that. But uh, before I do that, I, I want to transfer these uh, stickers over so let me get a, a tool to get those stickers off One second. as you can see I didn't fully plan this out so um, just trying to figure it out as I go here all right so I'm trying to get 
these uh, little stickers off if I can. Okay, got that one off. Let's uh, try to get this. All right, so that's one. Let's do the other ones. All done, I just have to go test this card out and make sure that all these uh, ports are fully working. All right, so here I've got the uh, card installed in my test server and I've got this uh, cable. This is my SFF8643 cable. I'm gonna use to test all four connectors that are over there. This cable is connected through this adapter to the back plane, which has a SAS controller. And so I should be able to see the, uh, the SAS links come up uh, once that's connected, provided that connector um, that I just replaced works uh, correctly. So, all right, let me set the camera up so you guys can see the diagnostic screen and uh, show you that, uh, I guess we're gonna discover if all, all those connectors actually work or not. All right, so I have my little test script uh, running there. And you can see at the top there's a red 16. That means there's 16 connections that are not connected. I haven't plugged any cables in yet, so that's expected. Uh, let's see what happens when I plug the cable in first to the uh, top connector. All right, so I've got a four. That's what I expect, four lanes per cable. So that's good. We know that one's working. Let me unplug goes back down to zero plugged into the next port and I've got another four at six gigabit because the uh, the SAS expander is a SAS 2 expander so that's expected all right so that second port is working unplug that plugged into a third port and that's again showing four up connections the six gigabit links are over here so, so far so good. All right, so uh, one more, one last one. All right, it's down to zero again. And I'm gonna plug in to the bottom. And we get another four connections, six gigabit down here. So that's awesome. So basically everything works on this card. So the repair was successful as you just saw earlier. So uh, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I've got the best selection of pre-flash IT mode HBA SAS controls, just like this one for your free NAS, true NAS, uh, Unraid, ZFS, whatever it is. If you need an HBA controller, go check out my eBay store. I'll leave a link down in the video description. So go check that out. And know that if you're buying from my store, all of these cards are tested thoroughly, just as you saw earlier. All SAS lanes get tested, and uh, you didn't see this earlier, but I also test all PCI lanes, making sure that everything is fully working if you're buying from my store, because you guys deserve it, okay? All right, thank you for supporting me, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.